Biden campaign is now so desperate, some are floating a walk down memory lane to the dog days of COVID. Now, Biden himself has even recently invoked the pandemic, and the president wants you to forget the mask mandates, the vaccine mandates, the lockdowns, the school closures, the mass hysteria. He certainly doesn't want you to remember that more people died in 2021 under his watch than died in the year that it started in January of 2020, uh, as he lives in the past. After all, it was a better time for Joe Biden. It was the beginning of his presidency, and the last time his poll numbers were significantly underwater. Well, anyway, his far left policies had yet to wreak havoc on you, uh, every American. And here with more, a governor who has kept South Dakota free, Christy Nome, is with us. Uh, by the way, congratulations. Uh, although you were number one, North Dakota beat you by one tenth of a point when it comes to having the, the lowest unemployment in the country. I'm sure that kind of irritated you. That would irritate me. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Yes, of course. We're always <laughs> competitive with other states, but you were you were talking about COVID, and I was just remembering back to those first days of COVID. And I thank God that President Trump was the president and was in the White House during that time because he actually let me, as governor, do my job. You know, he let me be governor, make decisions for our people that were the best for our state, and our state is thriving today because of that. Everybody's working; they're earning a lot more income. Women-owned businesses are doing better. Uh, we've got historic revenues and visitation, people moving in, we're growing, and it's all because President Trump was in the White House. And we've only seen our country decline uh, since Joe Biden has been the administration that I have to get up and fight every day. So if Biden wants to go back and visit COVID, boy, have I got some stories of what happened on day one when Joe Biden took over the White House, because our military declined, he attacked our people, he tried to mandate vaccines and masks and hurt our children and set them back. It was tragic uh, what his policies did to this country. With 222 days outside of Election Day, how do you assess the race right now? Gosh, I, freedom is doing well. I, I think that it's resonating with people, and they recognize that the only person that's going to keep them free is President Donald J. Trump. So that's what I think is amazing, is that you see people rallying around a man that gets up every day and fights for America. What America meant back when our founders brought it forward and gave us our Constitution, and he's the only one that stood there and defended our freedom of speech or freedom of assembly, a freedom of religion. Uh, so that's what's great. We just got to keep talking to them. So I'm spending a lot of time in a lot of these states that, you know, need to make up their minds and that we have to win in order to win the presidency. And that's Michigan and Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Ohio. Spent a lot of time in Ohio helping in that Senate race there. That all affects who wins the White House, too. So there's a lot of work to do. I think that uh, we're, it's looking good, but that means we double down and we press our foot on the gas. The, the Democrats seem focused on a very aggressive strategy now, probably out of panic more than anything else, and that's attack Trump, attack Trump, democracy in peril, January 6th, lying and demagoguing about uh, abortion, uh, trying to convince people that he's done a great job. I don't think, I don't think that's going to resonate at all. And, and as I'm watching the campaign, then I think of two advantages that they might have. Democrats are not resistant at all to voting early, voting by mail. They have pretty much mastered the, the laws where you're allowed to have legal ballot harvesting. Republicans, I've, and I know Laura Trump is working on this, but it's 222 days, it's a heavy lift uh, to match, hopefully surpass Democratic issues on that. Where do you stand on it? Should Republicans get over their reluctance and resistance to voting early and by mail? Do they have to do a better job of legal ballot harvesting? And, and how do you accomplish that in that short period of time? You work with the laws that you have in your state, and you make sure that your secretary of state is following the laws, and then you go hard, and you make sure that we win overwhelmingly in these states, and that it isn't a, a slim margin that we win by, that we win big, and we win big recognizing the difference in these candidates. What the Democrats' playbook is, is they're going to take a gallon of gas and throw it on a candidate throw it on Donald J. Trump and light it on fire and try to burn him and his family and everybody close to him to the ground and then manipulate and, uh, you know, bend election laws in every single state how they can. We have to be smarter, faster, work harder, and we're going to have to spend some resources to get it done. That's the problem that yeah. we face right now is that they're strategically going after Trump so that he's spending his money on legal battles and uh, they're putting money in Joe Biden's campaign account to come after our freedom. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, Governor, great to have you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.